It's gonna be so crazy watching this video back and being a mom and having a child. Like, it blows my absolute mind. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Wow, it has been a long time since I've done a proper sit down video. But today, as you can probably tell from the title, I wanted to do a second trimester update. I was tossing and turning whether to even do this because I honestly don't feel like my second trimester was like that interesting. But in saying that, I really want to have this memory to look back on and to like go through, I guess, how I felt and all the things that happened. Although I feel like there wasn't like a lot that happens, a lot of like cool things happen in the second trimester. So I wanted to go over them. If you haven't seen my first trimester vlog, I'm going to link it up here. It was filmed in like vlog style week by week how I was feeling. So that was super fun to film. But yeah, if you guys want to hear how my second trimester went, then please keep watching. Also, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit subscribe down below, give the video a thumbs up, and now let's get on to it. <laughs> so if you can't tell, I'm actually in his nursery right now. We have a few things already in here. So we've got the cot, we've got the little monitor up here, his changing table and dresser. That's pretty much all we've got at the moment. We have also ordered a nursing chair and I think that's it. We've also got like his pram and his car seats and stuff, but they obviously don't live in the nursery. So... We have got a lot of stuff already, which is nice. And I'm currently 26 weeks and five days, I think. So almost out of my second trimester. We definitely feel quite on top of things, which is awesome. The only thing we really need to do in the nursery now is to get like decals or something for the wall, just because we don't really have a lot going on. Um, and I also want to film a proper nursery tour as well once it's all set up. Anyway, I feel like I've already rambled for long enough. So let's get on to how I went week by week. So I wrote in my phone, weeks 14 to 18, pretty much everything was back to normal again. I had my appetite back, I had my energy back, and I was still training three to four times a week. So honestly, I feel like my pregnancy so far has been a very, like good one. I feel very grateful and happy with how everything's been going. I literally cannot complain about anything because I just feel like I've been so lucky and I've honestly loved every single second of it so far, even the bad things, which I will get into. Um, but yeah, I just feel really lucky with how everything's going so far and I'm just loving the process. So yeah, the first few weeks of this trimester were pretty much back to normal. The only thing I did right is that flutters started in week 17 slash 18. I feel like flutters is really hard to explain unless you've felt them before. It's kind of like gas bubbles or something. Like you almost just think like <laughs> digestion issues or something like that. So it's, it's like, is it gas or is it baby? It's kind of hard to know, but we did feel him kick around 19 to 20 weeks so i feel like yeah 17 to 18 weeks is when the flutters started and apparently it all depends on like the position of your placenta of like how early or late you will fill them some people don't fill them at all um depending on your placenta so yeah i guess we were pretty lucky in that sense that we did start feeling him quite early on um in weeks 19 and 20 we actually went to new zealand a few people did ask about this like how i went flying overseas what the doctor said and all that sort of stuff so if you don't know, the flight from, um, well, at least Melbourne to where we went in New Zealand was about three and a half hours, four hours. So in my mind, it wasn't that long, especially being sort of at the halfway mark. I felt pretty safe going. Also, my parents and my sister and my grandparents live in New Zealand. So for me, it was something worth doing, if that makes sense. I know some people travel overseas just for holidays and stuff in that time which is totally fair, but yeah, a few people did say like, oh, I wouldn't travel at that time, like I'd be too scared about getting stuck over there or something bad happening. But yeah, for me, it was like a risk, I guess, worth taking because I really wanted to be able to see my family before baby boy gets here. So yeah, we did go to New Zealand in that time and there were a lot of things that happened in that time, actually. So my appetite really started increasing. I needed to eat right before bedtime, like I would have dinner, dessert, and I'd have to eat again right before we went to sleep. And I was waking up around 3 or 4 a.m. still starving. So that was bizarre. That honestly lasted a long time, so we'll get into that. But yes, that's really where I noticed my appetite severely increasing. When I checked my app that I use, um, it did say that baby was growing like, I think he was doubling between weeks maybe 20 and 24 potentially. So I definitely noticed the increase in appetite. My number one craving was cold wheat bakes with stevia right before bed. 
that is still my number one craving right before bed and Andy got to feel baby boy kick for the first time which was just like the coolest feeling ever um, we just laid in bed every night with his hand on my stomach just like waiting for it and yeah he finally got to feel baby boy kick in week 20 Weeks 21 to 22, we had our um, halfway mark scan and ultrasound and everything looked really good, which is amazing. That scan is a little bit longer because they're measuring like every single thing about baby, like it's his head, his limbs, his heart, lungs, kidneys, like everything. So it is a little bit of a longer ultrasound and they don't really show you necessarily like the baby, if that makes sense. Like I feel like at your 13 week ultrasound it's all about just being able to see your baby and like that's exciting the 20 week ultrasound is more like the anatomy scan so yeah but it was still really cool to be able to see him um i was still getting up to pee in the middle of the night this has never stopped people lie when they tell you in the second trimester that stops for me it has not i wake up every single night to go wee so that's been fun i actually don't think i've slept through the night since being pregnant but I feel like it's just my body, you know, it's getting used to being a mum. <laughs> um, appetite was still very high and I started getting leg cramps overnight, almost like seizures. Again, this is really hard to explain if you've never felt them before because I did have restless legs throughout this whole pregnancy as well. I did struggle with that beforehand, but it's definitely gotten worse now. But the leg seizures are like, they almost wake me up and it feels like my leg is like, oh, I, I really can't explain it. It scares me every single time it happens and I have to sit there and like squeeze my leg until it like gets feeling back again, but it really hurts. <laughs> Weeks 22 to 24, my insomnia started back up again, which also meant I was feeling really low in energy and fatigued. I started napping or drinking a second coffee in the afternoon. Let me talk about insomnia for a second. I feel like every pregnant woman has dealt with insomnia. But my question is, I wonder if it's just because we have so much going on in our brain. Like, we're literally about to embark on, like, the craziest life-changing journey of all time. And I feel like that's why I struggle with insomnia, not because of, like, hormonal changes necessarily. I'm literally up every single night just thinking about, like, what's his name going to be? What to do for the baby shower? What I want to get done before he gets here? Like, all of that stuff. I just feel like I'm so preoccupied with thinking about baby and, like, life. I feel like that is why insomnia is such a big thing. So a lot of the time I was waking up around, yeah, 3 or 4 a.m. A, because I was still starving at that time. <laughs> Side note, keep a snack drawer beside your bed. I cannot recommend it enough. Nothing worse than having to, like, get up and go to your kitchen and get food. I literally just kept little, like, they're called fiber one bars in Australia, but, like, little muesli bar snack things um in my drawer overnight and i literally would just munch on that and i would fall back asleep so really helpful if you do struggle with insomnia having something to eat really makes a difference appetite increased having wheat beaks right before bed we know the drill it has not stopped since like week 13 wheat beaks cold wheat beaks i loved it before but i just i'm obsessed with it now <laughs> Um, still training three to four times a week, but pelvic girdle pain started at 23 weeks. Again, I really struggle at describing how it feels if you've never felt it before, but it's kind of like your hips and pelvis, there's a lot of tightness, and even when you're like walking or like going upstairs, you just feel so much pain and pressure, and it's almost like you can't take full steps, if that makes sense, because it's just like a shooting pain. It's really uncomfortable. It has sort of come and go. So I've been really lucky that it hasn't like stuck around because I know some people it, it does. Um, but whenever I train lower body, it tends to kind of seize back up again. So I have been a lot more careful when training lower body. I'm just using machines most of the time and trying not to do any sort of like single unilateral movements like lunges and stuff because that tends to make it worse. So yeah, I've just been really cautious in the gym at lowering my weights and making sure not to push myself too much. But the per pelvic girdle pain is no joke. Um, yeah, my fingers are just crossed. It doesn't come back again because I feel like the heavier you get, the harder it's going to be. I also wrote down my blood noses return. So that was a symptom I had in my first trimester. I kept waking up with blood noses and I had a few, maybe like three in those two weeks so nothing crazy but it is random that it just like started up again another thing that happened is i started to get a really nasty rash on my stomach boobs and back 
it's still actually there i went to the doctors yesterday to get it checked out and she gave me like a cortisol cream or something um but yeah apparently it's pretty common in pregnancy to get rashes although you can have ones that mean something bad and you can have ones that don't mean anything at all and it's just your hormones increasing so definitely get it checked out if you do struggle with that but i noticed just like one like almost like eczema patch and i thought nothing of it and then as the weeks went on they like started popping up everywhere you might even be able to see some of them on my upper body but yeah there's a lot on my stomach and boobs just random little like dots and all that sort of stuff so it's not very comfortable and it makes me feel a little bit self-conscious especially because we are going on a tropical holiday in a couple weeks and i wanted to be able to wear bathers and like rock the baby bump but my fingers across the rash goes away before then another thing that started in those two weeks was starting the nursery and as you guys can see we've managed to almost finish it so we bought the cot the drawers the changing pad car seat nursing chair storage boxes clothes we did a lot in those two weeks another tip for you guys if you're new parents is to look on facebook marketplace and go into op shops because I honestly think we got majority of stuff from those two places. This cot was $100. You could not find that anywhere. These drawers are from Ikea, but we got them off Facebook Marketplace for $150, I think. And they retail for $350 at Ikea. Um, so we definitely have saved a lot of money looking on Facebook Marketplace and thrift stores. So highly recommend especially if you're on a budget and then weeks 25 and 26 which is pretty much where i'm up to now it's been honestly the same as i've listed already <laughs> so still waking up in the middle of the night to pee every night insomnia comes and goes like sometimes i'll sleep without having to wake up other times i'll be up and wide awake i still get hungry overnight if i don't eat something right before i go to sleep baby is moving around constantly literally all day i just feel him like rolling around, kicking, punching. I don't know what he's doing in there, but I've started to be able to like film him from the outside because you can see it now, which is super cool. There's so many like magical moments in the second trimester that it's just awesome to like look back on. And although there's been a few like random things like insomnia and dealing with rashes, I still wouldn't trade it for the world because it honestly just feels like such a dream to be pregnant and to know that in like 12, 13 weeks time, we're gonna have a baby which is just wild like it's gonna be so crazy watching this video back and being a mom and having a child like it blows my absolute mind yeah but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to see a third trimester update please let me know give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys in my next video bye